Sweet, merciful crap. Rockstar really don't want to sell any GTA Online shark cards this week. Let's take a look at how you can snag a whopping $2 million every 90 minutes in Grand Theft Auto Online this week. Hi and welcome back. My name's Dan and I'm an old grumpy gamer. So this week's updates, we have double money for the Dr. Dre The Contract series. And what that means is we're back on Kyo Panther money for the week, completely solo. So for this, you'll need to own an agency. If you don't, just grab the absolute cheapest one, a uh, little soul, which will set you back a touch over two mil. And don't worry, it'll pay for itself. Don't buy any accessories or upgrades either. Wholly unnecessary at this point. In just a moment, we're going to go through the precise method you can use to blitz through through the mission series and properly maximize your earnings in Grand Theft Auto Online this week. If you've done the Dr. Dre mission series before, it will take around 80 to 90 minutes and net you a whopping $2 million a throw. If this is your first time to the agency, it will take a little longer first time round, about four or five hours or so, but you should collect a pretty cool 3.4 mil for your first round. Then it's back to $2 million every 90 minutes or so. Not bad. Right, for this guide, let's assume it's been a while since you've worked with Franklin, Imani, Dre, Chop and Lamar. So we'll go through each step of the mission series in a bit of detail, covering the best approaches. Oh, and if this is your first soiree into the agency, you'll need to set up the main mission set by doing a security contract. Links to a guide are in the description below. Oh, and if you've already done the contract at least once, you can go straight to your PC. No need to leave and re-enter the agency. Right, so register as a VIP, MC president, or a CEO, head to the agency, and sit down at the PC. With that done, head out of the building and await a a call from Franklin, then head to the golf course and walk into the Corona to start. After, quite honestly, an amusing cutscene, hey, you two bitches can't wait for the legend to shoot his shot, jump in a cart, then ram the pompous wankers in the other cart. The second one might take a minute, so don't worry. Give the fella a bit of what for, and then job's done. Right, now we can dive into the contracts story proper. For the first time round, this takes between three and five hours, depending on skill. And with the first time bonuses, we're looking at around 1.7 mil for that time. However, on the the replays, we can skip a lot of the intro gaff and the delays between missions. This brings the playtime down to around 90 minutes for most players, less again if you've come from another FPS. So we're on to the data leak setup next. Exit the building and wait for a call from Franklin. Then head back to the agency, upstairs and onto your PC. If you need to, pop back out and top up at Ammunition 2. Oh, and if you don't have a parachute, now's the time to buy one. Back to the PC in the agency for a quick briefing, then head out to the marker. Oh, and before I forget your agency comes with a free chopper. This is categorically the fastest way around the map, so don't forget to use it at every opportunity. Right, wait for Franklin to finish banging on, then head to the marker at the top of the FIB building. Drop in, and this is just a cutscene, but drop in, wait for Imani to finish talking, and blow the door at the back of the room. Either a pipe bomb, sticky, or a grenade will do the job. Go to the computer in the front and use the button prompt to install the USB drive, then head to the back corner of the room and hang tight. The guards can't hit you here, so it's the safest spot. Once the hacking tool has done its thing, you'll get another marker for a hard drive in the server. It's just a few feet to your left. Right, take a breath and head out to the fray. Take out any guards you can and make your way to the marker, which will drop you into the world. Run to the end of the balcony and jump off. Call in your car if you haven't already, jump in and lose the cops. After that, you can make your way back to the agency. Grab some snacks from upstairs, head out to ammunition, then back to the agency again after Franklin's given you a call up to the office and then start the nightlife league. Head out using the chopper and to the nightclub. Now I've tried dozens of different approaches and it more or less always ends up as a firefight so let's just do that. Go in loud and take out everyone. Head upstairs, grab the tapes, back out and back to the agency and on to the marina investigation next. So you know the routine by now, stacks, ammunition, await Franklin's call, back to the agency and up to the PC. After a quick brief we can start the marina investigation. Exit the agency via the chopper and head to the marina. Land next to the boardwalk if possible. Find the boat, jump in and sit in the driver's seat for a moment, then exit and take out any aggressive renter cops. Jump back into the chopper and head out to the search area. Now, the yacht we're heading to has K-9 
countermeasures that will blow us up if we get too close and something that prevents us from bailing out too close. So you can either get some altitude and helo jump out parachuting in, or you can ditch the chopper when you're getting close and swim. Either way, you'll be in the drink eventually. So swim to the back of the yacht, jump up and start blasting. Head to the marker, which is a red herring this time. Then upstairs to the bridge and you will meet resistance here. Go to both the left and right consoles to unlock the doors and disable the air defenses. Then back downstairs and do a thorough search until you see a poster. Quick happy snap, then back out onto the yacht's chopper and get the heck out of Dodge. And on to the first mini finale. Make sure you're fully stocked with ammo, body armor and snacks, we're going to need it. Back to the PC to start the mission, then into a vehicle and head to the casino. It's very much a case of following the bouncing ball for this one. Into the garage, up to the party, attack the DJ, then start blasting. There's no real finesse here, just use cover as much as possible and don't be afraid of using grenades and shoot everything you can. Oh, and watch out for this fella as you head into the lift though. It's super cheeky. Into the nightclub and just, well, light it up I guess. Shoot everything and keep on with those grenades. On to the country club investigation next. So, same deal. Snacks, ammunition, PC, start mission. This was recorded during the in-game night cycle, but if I'm honest, doing this during the day is a buttload easier. Exit the agency via the chopper and head to the country club on the west coast. We're going in hot, so hack the keypad, and this is just a simple puzzle, then get into the hallway. Make sure you have your grenade launcher set as your heavy weapon, and your pipe bomb as you throw it. Then grab any firearm and shoot the door once and pop anyone standing behind it. Lob some pipe bombs into the area immediately in front of you, then move to the right, sneak around the door and drop one more pipe bomb off to the left and back the heck out of there. Head to the back of the workspace and hack one of the terminals, then hang tight for Amani to do her thing. Once Franklin gives you the word, head back out into the chopper and into the search area, which is a question mark on the map. We're looking for a limo. Once you spot it, descend fast like dump the chopper and pile out as quickly as you can we've only got a few seconds to blow this up if you miss jump back in the chopper and wait for the limo to get caught in traffic then blow that thing up with your compact grenade launcher frisk the driver to grab his wallet then take it back to the agency guest list next so snacks exit phone call ammo agency pc start oh and we've unlocked the heavy sniper too so let's grab that head to the lawyer's place but stop short and look for a high vantage point in this case and it can change, but in this case, the best vantage point was the lawyer's own roof. So that's where we're landing. Pick off as many guards as you can with the sniper and the auto, then jump down and take out any stragglers. Be sure to avoid using grenades or shooting anyone in colored clothes. Suits only. Once you have the all clear, switch to the taser and zap the lawyer, then pick him up. Now, don't make the mistake of simply jumping in the car next. We're going to get some resistance here. So, take out anyone who turns up immediately, then jump in and head off. In most cases, you'll simply be able to outdrive your attackers. And with that, it's time for the next mini finale. So, snacks, exit, ammunition, agency, PC start. Drive to the mansion, open the gate, and pull up. Then hop the fence and walk past the DJ booth. Up the stairs, up the hedge, and the balustrade, and then onto the roof. Be sure to stay unarmed here. Once you're on the roof, head for this flat section. Once you get prompted, kick off the proceedings with a few well-placed launch grenades. Feel free to drop some proximity mines down the back here too, so you don't get flanked. Then start taking out guards as opportunities arise. Once you've done enough damage, our target will run. Now, if you're good with the grenade launcher or you've grabbed the homing missiles from ammunition, you might, might get lucky with the chopper. Sadly, RPGs aren't available to us for another 90 levels or so. So let's assume you've missed the choppers. Take out any stragglers, jump down the back, over the fence, and call in the DOD. Follow the chopper to Fort Zancudo and jump off the bridge with one of these conveniently placed ramps. Then out to the bluff, onto a jet ski, and onto the back of the yacht. You'll meet some resistance here. Make your way to the bow of the yacht, and then pop the billionaire who's hiding in the front entrance to the main cabin. Grab the phone, and if the chopper survived the assault, grab it and head off. Now, Rockstar clearly doesn't want us outrunning the mercs with the Super Valido, so after about 60 seconds, the chopper will mysteriously self-destruct. When you start hearing warning alarms, bail out. Take out any immediate threats, call your vehicle in, then make your way back to the agency. Rightio, next up, we're heading back to Franklin's old stomping grounds. So, you know the drill. Snacks, exit, ammo, phone call, agency, PC, briefing. Collect Vernon, then head to Grove Street, where it will have already kicked off. Pull up on an angle, driver side facing away from the action, and jump out. And make sure you have your launcher ready. Then start lighting up cars as they approach. After that, just light up everything you can see. Doesn't matter. We need to hold 
hold ground for just a few moments. Once you get a prompt to follow Vernon, jump back in a vehicle if there's one about and go find him. Then immediately make your way to the garage at the end of the alley and wait for the game to catch up. Wait for the interrogation to finish, there's no way to skip it sadly, then get rolling. Once you're out of the area, job's done. One more open world investigation before the big final push. So, snacks, exit, ammunition, phone call, agency, PC, briefing, start, exit again. Go and collect Vernon again and I'm not sure why he prefers the car to the company chopper but it is what it is. Drive to the marker, jump out, take some cover and start lobbing grenades. Then take out anyone left standing. Once we're clear, jump into the white van and start driving. Doesn't matter where, just drive. And be sure not to get boxed in. Corners are your enemy too. Oh, and if you're using a controller, pull up your interaction menu down to inventory and snacks and just leave that up. It's a pain on keyboard but super handy on controller. And after we've cleared the bikers and a wanted level if we've caught one, it's back to the lockup. Oh, and if you're having trouble shaking the cops and it's getting a bit out of hand, you can also give yourself two minutes of police free time by bringing up your interaction menu, going to secure o serve, VIP abilities and bribe authorities. It's not cheap, but it's super handy in a bind. Just be sure not to commit a crime or all bets are off. Okay, on to the last of the mini finales, the South Central League. So, snacks, exit, ammunition, phone call, agency, PC, briefing, start. Jump in a car and I like to use the Duke of Death if I can. Armor and pace comes in handy later. Then follow the prompts to the first waypoint where we'll catch up with Vernon and P. Follow them to the Vargos street party. Quick cutscene and we're dropped in behind cover. Honestly, there's not a lot of finesse or technique to this one. Just start shooting anyone you can see using the auto. Don't be afraid to change positions too. There's a dumpster to the right and a couple of other cars for cover. The sniper rifle is your friend for some of the more well-hidden Vargos. And once we've cleared the Vargos from the street party, there's another quick cutscene. Jump back in the Duke and chase down the yellow lowrider. Now, if you can pop the driver on the fly, great. Just grab the car and you're good to go. If you miss, like I did on this run through, he'll eventually park up. So not to worry, just take out his goons and liberate the vehicle from the warehouse yard. Back to the shop and we're done. Now, the next mission will take a while to become available. So we'll do a quick security contract while we wait. No sense in idle time. And by the time we've completed that, Franklin will have pinged us a new message. So make sure you load it up with snacks, armor and ammo, then head to the office to start the mission. Jump in the champion, head to the marker and park up behind these buildings on the right. Then use the building as cover to pick off as many of the mercs as possible. You may need to reposition regularly to sort these guys and it may take a few minutes first time round. Once you've picked off the last one, head into the studio. Slowly, and I mean slowly, work your way around through every corridor of the building. Note these guys hide in closets and hallways. They'll spawn in behind you. They avoid explosions where they shouldn't, and tear gas really doesn't do much. So it's a case of being cautious, retreating where needed, and keeping the snacks up. Also, grenades. I use a lot of grenades. And with that done, we'll be treated to a seven minute or so cutscene featuring some original work from Ray, which was a world premiere at the time the DLC dropped. Right, on to the last missions of the series, which comes with a hefty payout and mercifully the last mission of the day. So, usual routine here. Snacks, exit, ammunition, phone call, agency, start. Jump into the Duke and follow the GPS. When it says you're getting close, just drive into the train yard to trigger the first scene. So, spray and pray is the main technique here. Watch out for people trying to flank your right side, that can be quite bad. And hit any cars with the launcher the second they pull up. That will save you having to deal with the occupants. Watch your high side too. If anyone gets on the roof, they have a plumb shot. Grenades can help you with stragglers too. Off to the hangar next and be careful up the hall. Oh, and use containers for cover as you make your way around to the right. Oh, and you can only go around to the right. Rockstar patched the shortcut in the last DLC. Watch out for mercs hiding in the back of the cargo plane. A couple of well-placed proximity mines can help here. And with everyone cleared, pop Johnny Guns from as far away as possible. Climb the platform and grab him. Watch the cutscene with Dre, then drop him off at the country club. And with that, you'll collect a cool $2 million for hopefully around 90 minutes of work or 3.4 mil for five hours if this is your first time. So thanks for watching. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you in the next video.